So there are five things that I would recommend that a couple tries before deciding to move forward with the divorce process, because this is a big decision that you're making and you need to make sure it's the right one. The first thing that I would recommend, and it might sound elementary and almost laughable, like, of course we should do this, but is to sit down with your spouse and one-on-one -on -one talk about what it is that you are unhappy about because you can't expect them to fix something that they're not aware of. So don't just go and vent to your family and friends and do all of that behind their back because then you're not giving them a fair opportunity to fix what is going wrong. And also just make sure that you're doing it in what I would call a healthy manner. You're not angry, you're not pointing fingers. You're just saying, you know, look, this really bothers me and it's to the point where I'm not really happy in the marriage anymore and I wanted to let you know and make you aware of this. The next thing that I would um, recommend doing after that is to come up with solutions or problem solving how they can fix that problem. So if you're saying, you know, I feel like I am a housewife and a mother. I don't feel like I'm a woman anymore. I don't feel sexy. I don't feel appreciated. And I, I want to feel those things. Don't just tell him, your husband, that come back with what it is he could do to make you feel those things. Or, you know, if you're the man, it could be something like, you know, you feel like she just pays attention to the children all the time and you're kind of on the back burner and getting neglected ever since you had kids. And so you need to explain that to her and then tell her what it is you need back from her in order to make you feel better about that. So it, the, the critical component is in communication. The next thing that I would recommend is incorporating a date night, especially if you have children. It is so easy to get caught up in the chaos of life and you just start to lose track thinking, oh, well, next week we'll do a date night and you know, soon enough you've got months going by and you haven't had any one-on-one -on -one time and the only time that you're having together is passing out in bed at night, not even really talking about what your day is because you're just so tired from it all. And so if you're able to incorporate a date night, it kind of just, it um, brings you back and like refocuses why you guys got married in the first place. It doesn't have to be an expensive date night. You know, it could just be taking a walk down at the beach together and picking up a sandwich or, you know, anything. It doesn't mean that it has to be something extravagant, but of course it could be. But the important thing is to reground you and your spouse in your marriage and what united you in the first place. So trying to do a date night either once a month, once every couple of weeks. You just kind of have to see what works with your schedule and what starts working to make the marriage feel whole again. Then if you've tried these things, these are all things that you can do amongst yourself that don't cost any money, don't involve third parties. The next thing I would recommend is working with a marriage family therapist, someone who specializes in couples reconciliation. And the thing to remember here is I know sometimes therapy can be taboo. And you might think, oh, you know, I'm not going to go see a therapist. They're just head shrinkers. You have to find a therapist that's a good fit for you. And if you find one who's not, it will ruin the whole concept of therapy for you for life. So don't just look on your insurance list and say, oh, well, I'm going to pick this therapist because it, he or she is covered under my insurance or get one recommendation and go with that person. You need to carefully vet the therapist together and pick one that you actually feel a connection with because if you find a good therapist, it can make a world of difference. Then if for whatever reason, these things don't work, but yet you still really want to keep your marriage, I've developed a concept called the marriage contract. And it's something that I came up with several years ago because over the course of having my family law practice, I did come across couples where I thought, gosh, you know, I think they actually might be able to save their marriage and shouldn't be getting divorced. And so the critical component in being a good candidate for the marriage contract is that you both do still want to be married to each other and you're willing to do whatever it takes, you just don't know what to do. So those are the five things that I would recommend you try implementing if you haven't already or any one of them that sounds like it might be a possible option before deciding that divorce is the right course of action for you.